So today we're going to create an app which we can change its behavior remotely. For example, if we already published the app into the store and we want to turn off or on the app, such as AdMob or all the network, we can do remotely via the remote configs, one of the feature in the Firebase. And another scenario, we can alert uh, update available to the user, which is the way to let the user know where there is something uh, new to update or something like that. And this just kind of some scenario that we can use with it. And now we will implement an app which will show the pop-up that we will allow the user to update when there is a new version available. At first, we gonna create a new project in the Firebase console. As we can see there, my existing project. So if you new, just hit this add project. And then we give the name to the project. And this step, we just leave it by default. And here we going to select the default account and hit the create new project. And now it's just a processing create the project. Okay, here we gonna choose a platform. I gonna hit this for Android project. And this we require Android package name. So to do that, we going to create a new Android project. Rename the project. Now we can copy this uh, package name and hit the finish button. We just leave this moment because we want the PK name first. And we paste it back in here. The name is optional. We can put uh, whatever we want, but basically just put the name as uh, your name in the Android project. And then we have to download this uh, JSON file and we're going to place that inside our project and we have to uh, switch this to the project view and then we're gonna paste it here okay here we're going to doing double check if there are no existing in the google Maven repository and then we just add it we're gonna copy this to the gradle in the project level we're gonna place this line google service if there are no existing in the Google Maven repository, we just add it. And now in app level, we're gonna place this line Google service. And in the dependency, we can place the this dependencies analytic if you want, but mainly we want to add the remote configs dependency. So just go ahead to this web page which is to contain all the Firebase dependencies. We're gonna scroll down here and there is the remote config. So we're gonna copy that and then we're gonna paste it in the dependencies. All right, we're gonna pull the dependencies in our project. And now we're gonna go back to the Firebase console, go to the final step and we will see the screen okay the feature that we're gonna use is the remote config so let's scroll down to find that okay here and now this is the console that we can modify with the parameter and value to make it effects to our app right now we just keep it a moment here we're going to implement in android project first we're gonna create a dialog for display which we want to dynamic show the data to the users. Let's call this a custom underscore dialog. Okay, now we got the empty layout. So I'm gonna skip this design because it's gonna take time. Okay.
All right, now we have designed a very simple dialog which have uh, some info. The title with this ID and the body where we can describe what's new for our update. And we have skipped the button here that we can hide or show to force the user update the app or not. And then now we need a class to control that dialog. So we're gonna create a new Java class and we have to extend it from a dialog class and then we just uh, need to define a constructor the constructor here we need uh, two parameters one is the activity context and the second one is we need uh, for the object remote config which we will pass it from the main activity class And then now the dialog we have to inflate the layer of XML that we have designed in our class. To do that, we going to uh, override a method on create, which we always see this in every activity. Okay, and then we gonna call the set content view methods to place the layout XML inside that. And now if we imagine that we have a front side which is a layout connect to the back end which is the class. And now we can control those edit text fitted. So let's set up those reference. We're gonna find those view by the ID of each control at first. All right, now we only wait the data to set to those controls. For very beginning, we can see that in the Firebase console, there is a parameter keys and a value pair. The key and value here is very important part. We have to match those with the Firebase console and our code. So we're gonna define those key in other util class. Okay, so let's create a new class for store those keys. We're gonna call this a uh, remote util remember we want to change the title body and the action to determine whether force to update or not so the first key is the title the body which is the for describe what we want to update or fix something and then the version code which you want to release and the last we gonna define keys for force the user to update or not now we're gonna go to the main activity class to implement some code to activate the remote config. We're gonna define a global object remote configs here so that we can use another somewhere else in this class. We will instance new object Firebase remote config. And then we instance another config setting. So let's say a Firebase remote config settings. the config setting and new firebase remote config setting dot builder and then we're gonna call a method to set the catch expiration delay the default minimum fetch interval of uh, 12 hours but we actually can set that into one or two seconds for testing without waste time to waiting. In production, don't try to set this fetch frequently because the app might run into the limit and could cause a new error exception. Just keep in mind with that. And we now can set this setting with the remote configs. By the way, we will define the default parameter setting means when we launch at the first time and there is no network connection the app will use the default parameter that we're gonna set with it so let's say remote config dot set default asin and then we're gonna paste the value with it the value is gonna be xml or hash map key value pair in this case we're gonna use the hash map so let instance new object We're gonna set the current version at first. 
because uh, we will check that to show the pop-up dialog. But then after that, we will call the fetch and activate to start the request, the network and fetch the data. And now we're going to call uh, on add complete listener. And then we're going to implement the methods which we will call when we fetch the data from the server. So inside this body methods, we can get the parameters that we publish in the Firebase. Then we could use those to show the pop-up dialogs updates. Okay, we will create a new method to handle the update dialogs. So let's say uh, dialog show. Here we're gonna check the version. If the current version greater or equal than the server, we're gonna do nothing, mean we return it back. And then we're gonna instance the object custom dialog and we're gonna pass the parameter inside the constructor which is required. And then we're gonna call the show methods to display the pop-up dialog. Okay, so in the custom dialog class, we're gonna add some logic inside that. Here we're gonna check the parameter is a force to update or not so that we can set the button skip to invisible and enable to dismiss when we click on the border side. And this is gonna get a boolean value which is a true or false from the Firebase console. And we're gonna set the invisible to the left button and we're gonna set the cancelable to false. And else, we gonna show the button skip it back. And then we're gonna set the action with it, which is a dismiss. We also check when the user press it back and the status is false, we will exist the app. To do that, we gonna override the on back brace methods and we're gonna check if the Firebase parameter is false and then we're gonna exist the app. Okay, now we're gonna test the application. And now the app is launched but nothing is shown. So let's go to the Firebase console. And then we're gonna add those parameters with the value. So let's go to the remote util class. We're gonna copy this key and we paste it with the values. We're gonna publish the keys to the client. And now let's relaunch the app again. As we can see here, the pop up dialog appears. And if we change the value false to false, the dialog will show the button skip. And after that, if we disconnect it from the internet, it still remember the data and that and show the dialog. Okay, we have implements the remote configs, which we can publish from the Firebase and change app behavior remotely. If you're concerned about the app would hit the threshold limit, we may consider use the real-time database to perform the same action, but maybe we need to handle the catchy data locally. Anyway, hope you enjoy and learn what you show. And then don't forget to subscribe, share this to your friends, and see you in the next video.